Well, Elvis Presley said it best. There's a whole lot of shaking going on. Shaking, sifting, and a number of other things, Anok. How are you today from Moda'in, Israel? Uh, fine. You know, it's, uh, you know, we, we're hearing, you know, we, we, we may have another lockdown. Lockdowns don't help. We may have to do it anyway. You know, again, if it wasn't for the lesson of the hokey pokey, as a child in the Bronx in New York City, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to figure out any of my government's policies. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I do know that uh, I saw this morning that many of the cases are in, from Jerusalem or in East Jerusalem, which is yep. Palestinian control. Uh, are you seeing that there's more cases there, or do you even know if there's testing really at, at any level going on in those areas? Okay, well, first of all, just a, a clarification of terms, just so anyone listening who doesn't have the background doesn't get confused. It's not under the control of the Palestinian Authority. Yeah. Yeah. However, that's what's referred to as quote unquote East Jerusalem. We don't, we don't divide Jerusalem that way, but that was the area that Jordan occupied between 48 and 67. Uh, yeah, it appears to be rampant. I don't think there's very much testing going on there at all. Hmm. Well, this so is that, not a know, group of people that's known for watching a lot of uh, a lot of news. Well, you know, it's 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 kind of interesting the way that's going to play out. Very interesting article today in the Jerusalem Post, where researchers have been trying to figure out why it is that some people have incredibly severe illness associated with COVID-19. And on the other hand, there are people for whom it barely bothers them. Mm -hmm. And it appears that they're pointing towards the strength of their immune system and gut health. Isn't that a real shocker? -oo? Yeah, that, uh, let's see. That that would actually mean that we sh do have a responsibility to take care of ourselves? Well, you know, it's interesting. We, particularly in America, have built up an entire medical system that's able to, like, you know, I, I uh, have a, a cousin who used to be a physician, uh, and he used to say, we have to cut him to cure him. Mm. If it's not a pharmaceutical answer, it's a surgical answer. Yeah. There's no holistic medicine by and large. You know, it's really, and, and people, you know, kind of flounder. People have no nutritional information. Their doctors are not trained in nutrition. Well, it sounds kind of like, we're, you know, we're doing a, a, a pure uh, yeah, broadcast no. here. So well, let's, you know, let's I mean, back to yeah, th this is this is something I go back to, and this is, I mean, um, something I think about a lot. That w we talk about the restoration of all things. We we talk about the chem the coming kingdom, all of this that's going on. Uh, do, you know, the things that may happen prior to uh, on this side of it, and and somehow there's this idea. And this is, I, I think, more of a Christian idea, but I, I do think that it goes over into, in, into pretty much everybody. That I'm just going to pray and that Hashem is going to zap me into something uh, without, you know, it's like the, the temple being built. Um, you know, that all of a sudden it's just going to, like, appear and it's going to be there. And the kingdom's just going to, you know, poof, kind of like the, you know, the rubbing, you know, if you rub, take your, take your scripture and rub it three times and you're going to get, uh, you know, your three wishes. That's not how life is. No. It, 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 there is a, there is this cooperation that is, to me, when I think about this concept and all, it is mind boggling. That, that the Almighty has set into the laws of creation, that he would partner with mankind to bring forth his desires, his kingdom upon this earth. I mean, that, you know, that, that's kind of one of those things that, 
you know, remember in the 70s, you know, you got a little bit too uh, rambunctious with the pinball machine and it went tilt and you had to unplug it and reset the whole thing. Uh, that, that's one of those thoughts that makes my brain go tilt and I need to stop and reset. Yeah, I think the entire world is undergoing a reset. And, um, you know, there was something you posted before your thought of the day. And, you know, maybe this would be a good point of departure to talk about that a little bit because this may not have been your in intent, but I think it's all about the restoration. Well, before we get to that now, you have another lesson for us. Uh, you are the, you know, kind of the standard of, of uh, wardrobe and of cultural uh, fashion trends. And so could okay. you share with us for the day? Well, you know, it's interesting. As I was, you know, uh, I, when I came back from the gym, um, you know, and I changed into um, a, a tank top. And then I, you know, I remember that that's, you know, not appropriate for our audience. So the shirt that I grabbed out of the closet, I looked in the mirror and I smiled. So let me show you what the shirt says. In Hebrew, it says, Ani, with a heart, Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. I love the land of Israel. But if you look closely at the shape around Eretz Yisrael, let's... It's Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates. There you go. There you go. So I thought... I thought that was subtle, and you know, I, I, I liked it. All right, okay, so there you have it, Hanok Young, going to every extreme he can in with his own life to teach us about our love for Israel. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, well, just as you go to the closet and pick out a shirt, uh, you're right, every day for about a year and a half now, I've done a uh, thought for the day, and I've I started posting those on Facebook, actually, now. And uh, I have, I have, I just kind of think in, in sound bites, I guess it is. So I have always got a piece of paper with me or my phone with a notepad, you know, to open the notepad and stuff. And these random thoughts, and, and it comes from, from listening to uh, different things online, but sometimes it's just, you know, kind of driving down the road, and it's like, bing, there it is. So I have a, a whole list on a, a Word document of different things, and I go through that, or if I don't have something new, I go through that. And, and I mean, it's literally like hundreds of these little one-liners, and this morning, I, I was I I had already cut and pasted something to put out today, and it was like no I don't like that. So I scrolled down a little farther, and this is what jumped off the page, off the screen at me. Uh, don't focus on the people that God Elohim uh, uh, Hashem removes from your life. He has a vision for you and knows better than you if they would help or hinder you getting to it. Now, you immediately posted something back to me, actually emailed. Um, I, I've, been, I've already received a, a couple of other emails and you know, reactions to this. Um, what, without getting personal, of course, what do you see there? I see a message and when we speak of the whole sorting out going on, I tie it into something that I learned back in, I guess it was 2004. It was about 16 years ago when I heard a, a presentation and the presenter went to great lengths to explain that in his opinion, people have the wrong attitude about relationships or friendships or uh, you know of any kind that sometimes people are destined to be in your life for a season mm 
-hmm. or several seasons. Whereas we tend to think of it as forever. And with the changes going on in the world now, with the sorting out that's going on, and, I, and, the, and the sorting out, without a doubt, is clearly going to be those who are truly with Israel and everybody else. I, now, good. No, it, it, it's, 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 it's so clear more than ever before. The, the recent disastrous explosion or explosions in Beirut, that ammonium nitrate, and, you know, again, you know, people will say, no, it couldn't have been. You know, yeah, if you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you haven't taken chemistry since high school, you know, back in the 1960s, you, 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 you may be surprised that the world has changed. <laughs> that material was to be used in explosives against Israel. Yeah. Now, Israel knew about it. It was in the photographs of the Beirut port that Netanyahu had held up. So why didn't Israel preemptively take it out? Because look what happened when it exploded. Had this been something Israel did, it would have been disastrous for us. So Hashem had to step in and take care of it. Mm. You know, people who had been so involved in this movement have moved away from it because they're, they're focused on, you know, something else that's going on in the world. You know, who's wearing a mask, who's not wearing a mask, you know, who should be wearing a mask, who, you know, it, it's, 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 People are, you know, designing masks like I Dream of Genie. It's, you know, everyone's, everyone's like so involved in this. And they don't realize they're being sorted out. You know, you, you talk about back to, you know, people being brought into our lives and, and taken out for seasons. Uh, I think back to the, you know, we just went through the last chapters of uh, the Minibar numbers. And it talks about the times, the places that the Hebrews stopped in the wilderness. And, you know, you got 40 years. Uh, some of those places, they were there just for a few days. And all of a sudden, this cloud picked up and started to move. Other That's places, right. they were there for, for an extended amount of time. And through that, I, I coined a phrase a number of years ago out of this of keep your tent pegs shallow. Yeah. You know, if, if we put our tent pegs too far in the ground, when the cloud begins to move, here we are trying to get our tent pegs out and everybody else is moving on. If you don't put them in far enough and a desert wind comes, all of a sudden you're chasing your tent you know, over across the camp, and that looks really stupid. So th this whole thing is true, not just in physical places, but with people. And, and it's, it's interesting to me as I look back and, you know, experience uh, life. Uh, life happens as you get older, and experience is a wonderful thing. And it would be great if you could have you know, life experience when you begin it, but it just doesn't quite work that way. No, uh, it doesn't. I, I've seen even recently, recently, uh, people that when, you know, a number of years ago, we were working together in things and all of a sudden something happened. And they were literally just kind of ripped out of, away from me and then brought back the same way. And so, you know, it's just, it's overwhelming sometimes to consider the, the way that, that the Almighty works in our lives, the, to, to the extent. I guess that's the, the hardest thing sometimes for me to, to uh, embrace, to grab a hold of, is the extent that He desires to work in my life. 
your thoughts on that? Well, not only does he desire to work in your life, but he orchestrates it through natural phenomena. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's not like all of a sudden you're planting in your yard and you discover, you know, a treasure chest, you know, of gold and diamonds. He finds other ways to reward you. He finds other ways to enable you to, you know, earn a living. It, it's, it's, it's really, really amazing that, and, you know, because it's all through natural means, we tend to think of it, that's where the term coincidence comes from. It was a coincidence that I ran into that person that I haven't seen for years. You know, was it a coincidence? But you went home a different way and you stopped at a convenience store that you've only been in once in the last 15 years. Coincidence? Yeah. Or was it orchestrated that way? You yeah. know. Go ahead. No, it, it, it's, it, it's a sense that you need to acknowledge it and not get lost in it. Yeah. Yeah, there's an interesting teaching. Uh, Rabbi uh, Shalom Arush, uh, who has written numerous books that I've read, uh, Garden, of, uh, Garden of Peace, uh, Garden of Immunah, numerous. I, I love a lot of his writings. Uh, it also goes along with something that comes from the Native American culture of America, you know, here, and that, and, and, by the way, I mean, if anyone has never seen that those, that that Native American culture kind of has a lot of things that are biblical when you go back to the root of it, and both, both of the culture, both that author and the culture of Native American uh, is, an, is an intriguing thing, and it's so very simple in, it, in its concept. You go to the grocery store. And you walk in the door and you go to the produce section and on your list is, I need tomatoes. You stand there at the, you know, the tomato section and it's like, okay, well, you know, you start looking through them and picking through them and you, oh yeah, that's the one. And you put, pick it and put it in the bag and put it in your cart. Right. The teaching is actually, you didn't pick the tomato. The tomato was created for you. And I saw, that, I saw that played out a number of years ago when we took our daughter-in-law up to Cherokee, North Carolina to get a Native American flute. She won a flute. And she, she I mean, she'd, she'd taught herself how to play and doing beautiful with them with Kathy's. And then, so we're, we're walking around and, you know, this guy is showing her different ones. And she walked in knowing which one she wanted. She had already in her mind picked out, you know, this is what I want. And she went and played these numerous flutes. And it was like, no, no, no. And the guy walked over. He said, well, come over here. And we walked over to that center cap. You've been there, that center sure. counter. And uh, he said, here, try this one. I got two here. Try this one. And it was like, kind of, okay. And then he handed another one that was totally out of what she had imagined. I mean, she, this is not even what she went in the store for at all. She, wow. She started to play it. And you, like I said, you've been in that store. When she started to play this flute, every customer in the whole store stopped what they were doing, turned and looked at her. Now, did she pick the flute? Or had that flute been created for her? That's right. The it, latter. Yeah. You know, you can use the expression, the flute picked her. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, it, it, it's, it's really, and what's difficult is in such a time of uncertainty that we're all in the midst of, and the situation here in Israel is very different than in the U.S. And in the U.S., it varies from state to state, you know, seemingly de more dependent on who your governor is 
than the status of anything else. But in, in any case, this is the time of ultimate faith, yep. emuna, and this is the time where you've got to get back to basics. You know, it's like uh, the other day on uh, on the Shema Yisrael site on Facebook, uh, I posted a, a quote from the biblical Zionist, you know, about, you know, Hashem saying in Tehillim in Psalms about, you know, you know, saving, you know, Zion. So someone wrote in and asked, you know, like, what about, you know, what, what, what about us in the U.S.? Now, first of all, there shouldn't be a bit any surprise that th those words of Psalms have been there for 3,000 years. So the fact that we're kind of questioning it now, okay, separate issue. But the reality is we're being tested. Those who are fully aligned with Israel will come through this whole thing. Okay, now I, I, I don't know the blueprint. No one does of how that's going to be. But Hashem has promised that he would not forget his people. Now it's contingent upon the chosen being choosing. Yeah. Those who've come to understand that they're part of Israel, in addition to their Jewish brothers and sisters, and the Jewish side of the family, have to choose to be in the mix yeah. or they can choose to opt out yeah and, and and i think part of it is going back to and we're running out of time here but you know in in this whole process i think one of the things you know if, if we're looking for and acknowledging when we see these things and acknowledging what we see that, that life is not just haphazard. None of our lives are haphazard, but they're directed. You know, there's a psalm about that, trust in, in Adonai and, and uh, he shall direct your paths. I, I think there's a few verses we could probably quote on that, but seeing these things and acknowledging it. You know, if we go through life and we see something and just kind of, oh yeah, well, that was Hashem working in my life, but never really acknowledge it, is it possible that we are setting ourselves up for a blinder later on? That he says, you know, if you're not going to acknowledge me and, and, and give me any type of recognition or thanks when I show you what I'm doing, then, then why should I show you anything else? Why bother? That's right. Why bother? Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, hello, as I said to you earlier, we're, uh, I'm going to be on the road next week. So, Everybody, I hate to say this, but you're going to have to take a break from me. Uh, I know, I know, sorry, but it's just something that happens. But we're going to try to set up to where possibly, I'm also going to be taking a break from Foundations for Life next week and um, trying to put it together where maybe you'll see Barry and Hello together. That could be an interesting conversation. Absolutely, without a doubt. All right, you want to get any information from Hello, get uh, comments or questions, suggestions, uh, whatever you want to say, callyehuda.com is in the tagline as we, uh, as we go. So, hey, be safe. We'll, we'll talk soon. Shalom, y'all. Bye-bye.